All right, here we go. So uh, I told you I'd shoot some videos and I've been talking to a couple people about clutching. So I thought we'd start here with clutches. Clutches on your F-Mod. This would translate somewhat to road racing. Um, you guys who have two-stroke road racing. Um, so if you're new to two-stroke class, I think this will help you. This is kind of a brief overview of, uh, you know, what's what and what to look for and all that fun stuff. All right, so clutching. So this is my new F-Mod. Uh, we're looking obviously at the clutch side and real quick for terminology, um, you know, obviously this is a primary clutch. The primary is the one that's connected to the engine. The secondary clutch is the one that is um, driven by this belt, by the clutch belt. The secondary on some older cars can actually be behind the engine, um, but on most cars, most F-Mods uh, and road racing cars, you'll see it in front of the engine. Uh, but for now, uh, let's talk about kind of just the, the basics. So step one, uh, if you're looking at your car, is just how do you like service it? How do you deal with it? So to get the clutch off, uh, it's, there's a couple, couple steps. So it's held on by the primary bolt. Primary bolt is uh, a different, they can be different sizes depending on which, uh, which car you have. But uh, oh, real quick, I'll go through the tools. So I keep uh, a certain set of tools, everything I need to remove a primary with me in grid at races, especially at national events just so if I need to get the primary out of the way to service something else or work on the primary, it's pretty easy. And it only takes a couple of tools. So you kind of need like a long pry bar because you basically need something to hold the primary in place. You need to be able to remove that bolt and then you need to use a clutch pulling tool. So actually I'll show you these in just a second. Let me get that bolt off real quick. So if you are looking at the primary, so this is just a long screwdriver that I use. When I put it through uh, underneath the cover, I wanna make sure I don't go in between these kind of three, see where these two bolts go, and I'll show it to you in a second on the side view. You don't wanna put a screwdriver through that spot. We wanna go through these wider open areas and brace it um, so that it's not damaging that surface that the spider rides on. So that's step one. So let me get this in place. And that bolts, uh, I think, factory spec is like 80 foot pounds um so that one was obviously not <laughs> 80 foot pounds i had that on a little tight so that's my clutch bolt um they all look different uh, whatever's on your engine i'm sure it works just fine so once you have the bolts out then you use a clutch removal tool i'll actually show you i've got two different kinds this is the one that works with this clutch it has the wider opening some clutches have a smaller opening um, so you can see the difference there. So this would be for the smaller opening clutch. I have another clutch that I had to buy this tool from. So depending on your clutch, you may have to, if most cars have a clutch removal tool that will come with their kit of spares. So if you see a tool like this hanging out um, in your tool bag, that's what that is. So this just threads in. And what I actually like to do on my clutch removal tool, because what happens is, is you're driving this in like a bolt and it's gonna push against the engine and pull the primary off. Is maybe a little bit of grease, in this case, I'll just use some NACs, put it on the tip of that thing, because it basically has to push against, you know, a hard surface, the snout of the engine. So I wanna give it um, just a little bit of lubrication. And then, yeah, throw that everywhere. Uh, and then a little bit on the threads. Again, just to make sure everything has a little bit of uh, lubricant on it. And then I always like to use an impact. So you can use just a regular ratchet on here. It takes a lot of force. I find that the impact, um, the impact gun, um, because of that kind of like hard impact, generally knocks these loose and will pop them off um, pretty well. If you're using a wrench, just be prepared. It takes a lot of force. And when it pops loose, that taper pops loose, it comes loose all at once. All right. Make sure we are good to go. I have this, see if I can get, them. hold on one second. Technical difficulties. I'm gonna take my tire cover off here. I just need a little bit more space. There. That's it. And then back the clutch bolts back out. So 
So now it's loose from the taper. Um, I pulled my top four link out of the way um, just to make this easier, but this whole thing will usually kind of slip off and slide out. So there you go. That is taking the primary off. So here you can see the ring gear where the starter ring gear for the starter engage, my clutch sheath faces, um, and then the inside of the primary itself. And that's what I was talking about. You don't want to put the um, your pry bar through the surface because these faces um, are used by the primary. There's buttons that ride on there like a little slippery surface. So we make sure those stay nice and clean and smooth. So that removes the primary from the engine. And real quick on the engine. So I know it's not direct clutch related, but this is the snout on the engine that the clutch sits on. It's good to take your primary off at least once a year for sure. If not two, three, four times, just so you can pop everything loose, scotch bright this bad boy, get it all cleaned up, scotch bright the inside of the taper inside your primary, get that all cleaned up because these can rust and weld themselves together. And as you can imagine, that is a nightmare scenario. Um, I know quite a few owners who have had to fight a very long, tiring, stressful fight to try to pull the primary off the engine. So it's good to take those off at least a few times a year just to make sure everything stays loose and clean and there's no rust building up. All right, so that's removing the primary. Removing the secondary is different on all cars. I'm gonna leave mine on. You're just gonna to have to look at how your car is assembled. Usually it's sliding the jack shaft out of the way and then the secondary comes out. I actually have another secondary that I'm gonna use for demonstration. Let me get this cleaned up. We're gonna move over to the workbench and I'll talk about uh, breaking down the clutches and what to look for um, just to kind of make sure everything is operating and clean. All right, catch you in a second. All right, clutches off the car. Got it in the house because it is hot outside. <laughs> like, man, I'm moving indoors. All right, so clutch. And I've got it kind of partially disassembled. How I did that, it's really simple. Um, you know, when your clutch cover is all screwed down, uh, everything on all the bolts are tight. What I do is I back out completely one, two, three bolts completely out of the way so that these bolts are totally loose. And then I slowly just, you know, a few turns each, right? here, here, and here, and sit there and walk the cover loose. And it'll eventually get to this point right here, and the moving sheave, which is this one, will kind of fall away. And that way your clutch cover is released. And then real quick, I'm gonna point out, notice this X right here? Keep that in mind, we're gonna come back to that one. All right, so this is the clutch disassembled. Hey look, there's another X right there, that's weird. Uh, so this is the clutch disassembled. Uh, real quick, again, this is not, you know, I don't want this to be clutching theory where we would talk about spring rates and wheel, I mean, and uh, weights on your and ramp angles, and all that fun stuff on your moving weights. I just want to talk about what you have, what condition that's in, and what to look for to make sure everything, at least that's just on the car right now, is working as well as it can. And then maybe, you know, we can talk about it in the comments. Um, in the Facebook group or whatever, some clutching theory items about how to get more performance out of your clutches to make sure everything is you know, weighted and sprung correctly. But for now, let's just take a look at what we got. So what we got is your spring. If your spring is super, super old, uh, it will actually take a set and sit here and just be compressed. If your car was purchased used and that car was all assembled, um, and sat for a few years with the primary and everything assembled, I guarantee that the spring that's on your car uh, is not up to spec, right? It's already, it will take a set in the compression and then a lot of times it will uh, become softer, which will really throw off the performance. So step one is in the winter, if you have time, it's pretty smart to pop the primary apart just so you can at least disassemble and take the cover off to let the spring uncompress and just sit there. Just for longevity's sake, um, to, to make sure everything stays um, fresh and happy. So that's your spring. Uh, by the way, th they tell springs apart by the color. So I know that this is a spring from Venom Performance and the white spring. And so I can go back and look up in their catalog what that spring rate is, its initial um, pound rating and then how much it takes, how much weight it takes, how much pressure it takes to fully compress it. 
All right, so that's step one, spring. Step two is, um, and if we talk about, so we talked about this was the moving sheet. This is called the spider, this kind of triangular piece that's on top of it. The spider has little plastic like buttons, like glides um, that are on each side of um, each piece. Those buttons ride against these kind of smooth, I don't know if that shows up in the video or not. These, there's like a smooth, uh, slick area that the buttons ride against. If there's too much slop, when I'm trying to, like I'm trying to rotate my moving sheave, if there's too much slop on that, uh, that will really kind of mess up how efficient your clutch can be. You can have a primary rebuilt. Um, so if you don't want to do it, you can send it off. I know Leon does it. I know Mel Winnie would probably take a stab at it. Um, there's quite a few shops, even shops in town that just deal with, sorry, I'm making the camera shake. I'll try not to. Uh, there's our shops, just like power sports shops, especially ones that do Polaris because we all use, most everybody uses a Polaris primary, right? So it says Polaris on the cover itself. So if you go to any Polaris dealer and take them your primary, um, they usually will be more than happy to help you um, with just a rebuild. And the rebuild is usually uh, taking the spider and the components, everything apart, replacing the buttons. And then also underneath the spider are these rollers. So there's a roller that's down in here. That roller rides on like a little nylon fiber bushing and those can wear out and these can get stuck. So if your roller is not rolling, check all mine, mine all feel good. Um, and then while I have it apart before I put it back on the car, I will actually put some Teflon and kind of spray that and soak down those bushings just to make sure everything stays uh, lubricated and rolling and smooth. Anyway, so those are the things to check on the spider. Make sure that the bushings are good, make sure the buttons are good. Speaking of this moving sheave, there's another part that um, can wear out. There's a bushing, another nylon fiber bushing, and it's actually like down inside the sheave itself. It's what rides on this main steel post. If there's a bunch of play in that, you'll feel it by taking this moving sheave and like kicking it side to side. So see how mine just has a little bit of rock? Now I'll tell you this primary um, was actually brand new, literally, uh, brand new last year. It has, most primaries have a manufacturing date stamped on the cover. So this says 05, 06, 20. So 2020. Uh, so that was purchased brand new last year. So, uh, oh, and the part number, in case you're curious, uh, if you Google that, it's 1323081. Um, that's one that will fit our cars really well. You have to have it machined on the back side for the taper to fit our Skidoo, our Rotax engines, because it's a Polaris primary going onto a Skidoo, you know, snowmobile. So you have to cut a fresh taper on that. If you need help with that, let me know. I got a guy. All right, anyway, so back to this. Again, we're just checking to make sure everything is fresh. So you can take that moving sheave uh, and have, and if it's like wobbling like crazy, that means that that bushing on the inside is really worn out. Probably these buttons are worn out. It might be time to consider replacing it. If you want to try to be pointy end, you definitely should replace it. All right, so there's those components. And then lastly is the moving weights themselves. So the weights, you know, move on this pivot bolt and there's three of them. They push against that roller. And as the RPMs pick up on the motor, you know, centrifugal force flings that weight out and that's what actually wants to push the moving sheave down, right? So again, you can change shape of that, you can change weight, total weight on it, you can change the weight distribution. That's all much more advanced than what I was gonna to talk to you about tonight. Um, but just know that this weight needs to move freely. So check all three of them and make sure they're all moving freely. Look for any wear down inside on the cast aluminum or on the inside of the spider and make sure that the weight isn't moving too far laterally. So there's a bushing, another bushing that is inside the weight. Some weights are serviceable, some of them are not. You'll have to check that and just make sure that that hasn't completely worn out. It's pretty easy to just undo this lock nut, slide the pin out, the weight, the whole weight will come out. 
and you can look and see if that little nylon bushing that's in there, that fiber bushing that's in there, um, is like egg shaped or worn on one side. Um, these adjustable weights I have actually have um, bushings that you can just press new ones in. Super simple. You just take the new one and push the old one out with the new one. So you can replace those bushings. Um, but those are kind of the key components to check over on your primary clutch just to make sure everything's happy, right? So what we talked about, spring, that spring's been in there for a couple years, or if you don't know how long it's been in there, get a new one. They're dirt cheap. They're like 20, 30 bucks. Just go find out what it is, black with a yellow stripe. You can kind of, you know, there's a, if you go to the Facebook group page, if you go to the files section, I know that there is a, a clutch part number kind of spreadsheet that's in there. So you can kind of help figure out what is my spring. On the spider, we want to check the buttons. We want to check the rollers. Before you reassemble it, spray some Teflon. Nothing that's going to form a paste or a film like grease or anything like that because that's just going to collect dirt and then really wear stuff out. So we want to put a, uh, you know, like a non-sticky thing. So I guess you could use Molly. I would probably, I would use Teflon. And then on the moving weights themselves, right? We want to make sure that they're moving and free. Stuff that's not really serviceable is that bushing that's down inside the moving sheave. If it has a ton of play in it, you can put new bushings in there. It is a pain in the butt. I've never been able to do it successfully. So just be advised if you start seeing a whole bunch of play that it's quite possible that that clutch has just worn itself out and it's time to start budgeting for a new one. All right, so that's all I got. Now I'm gonna reassemble this by matching up. See this X? Put my spring in here, put my cover plate back on, make sure that my X lines up with my X. That has to deal with how everything, the rotating assemblies are balanced. So you can see these drill marks on top. So this side was a little bit heavier. You know, this with the sheave and everything was a little bit heavier. So they come through and mill out a little bit of aluminum on the casting because everything has been um, spun balanced. So just keep in mind, we always want to make sure that, and there's actually an X, you can't see it because it's underneath the primary. On this moving sheave, there's an X stamped down here. So that's why you see like blue ink, blue ink, uh, just helps me kind of like double check and make sure everything goes back together in the correct orientation. All right, I'm gonna put this back together and uh, after <laughs> spraying some Teflon and clean some things up, and uh, maybe I'll shoot another video on the secondary in just a little bit. We'll see if I can get it done tonight. If not, it'll be up soon. All right, guys, if you have questions, post them below. We're a pretty helpful bunch. Whatever we can do to make everybody faster makes the class better. Let's do it.